are, wherever it is that you're watching, turn it into a sanctuary at this right. time. Amen. 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 We're going to be receiving right. the communion at the end of the service. I tell, I'm saying that for the benefit of those that are watching from remotely still. If you'd like to get some time to get some juice or crackers or bread, whatever you like, we're going to be doing that. I hope you'll join us in that. you mind please standing with me? I'm going to open in prayer, and then we're going to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you for this beautiful day that you've created. We thank you that we are yours. We're not floundering, God. We're not random people. We're not mistakes. We are yours, and you are doing a mighty thing. God, we, we feel like you are about to do a great awakening of your church. We believe that, God. We're standing in that, Lord. And I today, I ask, God, I just state out loud, we want to be part of that great awakening that you are doing. That's right, amen. That's right. Father, as we're worshiping, Lord, I pray that your spirit would fall in this place in a mighty and a powerful, manifest yes, way, Lord. Lord God, God, change lives, yes, Lord. As we're worshiping you, let that worship be a conduit through which your spirit can come in. That's right. Empower amen. us, Lord. Invigorate us, Father. Yes, okay, Wake amen. us up, Lord, yes, we pray, amen. as we worship you in Jesus' name. Let's worship the Lord. Amen. amen. For this day, we're gathered in your name, calling out to you. Your glory like a fire, awakening desire, will burn our hearts with truth. You're the reason we're here. You're the reason we're singing. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Your presence in this place, your glory in our face, we're looking to the sky, descending like a cloud, you're standing with us now, Lord, unveil our eyes, you're the reason we're here, you're the reason we're singing, open up the heavens, we want to see you, open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Yeah. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. Open up the heavens, we want to see you. Open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Open up the heavens. We want to see you open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. I'm just going to stop and share for just a second. We're going to go into prayer because we're going to pray at the end and we're going to go back into this bridge. Show us your glory. Show us your glory. And the Bible says that when we come before the Lord, if we have anything against a brother, 
anything against his sister. That we're supposed to leave our gift at the offering, at the altar. We're supposed to go and make it right. And then come back and offer up our sacrifice to God. So we obviously can't just go leave the building if there's something you need to take care of. But right here in the presence of God, as we just continue to cry out to him, Lord, we want you to show forth your glory. Lord, we need you to open up your heavens. Father, we need you to come and descend upon us like a cloud. So, Father, today, God, even right now in this moment, I know right now for me, this moment, even before I came on the stage, there was a little uh, comment that the flesh just rose up in a moment. A comment just came out. And that's not of you, God. That's not of you. So, Father, right now, as I'm singing this song, I'm convicted. I'm convicted, Lord, that I am crying out to you for you to open up the heavens. I'm crying out to you to descend like a fire. And, Lord, I pray that right now in this moment that you cleanse us, Lord. Cleanse us. Purify our hearts. Prepare us for your glory. Prepare us for your glory. Open up the heavens. Let it flow, Father, because it comes from your heart. It flows from your heart. So, God, we ask right now for you to forgive us of any word, of any thought, of any deed, of anything that we have done that is not according to your love. We ask for you to forgive us. We ask for you to cleanse us and to make us right so that we can stand in your presence and we can cry out and we can intercede and we can ask for your spirit, Lord. We pray in Jesus' name. Show us your glory. Hallelujah. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. No flesh, nothing of the flesh, God. Show us your glory. Show us, show us your glory. Show us, show us your power. Show us, show us your glory, Lord. see you open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Open up the heavens, we want to see you open up the floodgates, a mighty river flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. From your heart, filling every part of our praise. Hallelujah, Lord. Flowing from your heart, filling every part of our praise. Hallelujah, Lord. broken within overwhelmed by the weight of your sin Jesus is calling have you come to the end of yourself do you thirst for a drink from the well Jesus is calling blood of Jesus Christ. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. Thank you. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come to your day, there's no reason to wait. 
Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. blood of Jesus Christ will come to the altar the Father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ that you threw the stars in the sky just so we can look up and see your great power and wonder about your glory in us. Lord, forgive us for our sins. Forgive us for every time we turn to something else other than you, other than your holiness. Open our eyes, Father. Holy Spirit, open our eyes. 
bring enlightenment, bring power. That same power that raised Jesus from the dead, you gave to us. Jesus, baptize this place in the Holy Spirit with power that we bring glory and honor to your kingdom. That we see souls saved because it's not about what anybody does, but it's about what you do. It's our promise, our inheritance is not of this world, it is in you. Help us to be that light in our homes. Let that light shine. Let the gospel reflect clearly in our homes, in this church, in this beat live here, in this state that will be a light to this nation, that it will be a light to the world so that your kingdom will come to this planet and all evil will be destroyed once and for all because you are God. In the name of Jesus. At this time, we're going to receive our tithe and offering. Holy Spirit, we and friend how we need your 
touch again. Holy Spirit, bring down, bring down. Let your power fall. Let your voice be heard. Come and change our hearts. As we stand on your word, Holy Spirit, and please give me a uh, key of D, brother. There's a song, there's an old song that's just resonating in my heart. Very, very simple worship song. He is exalted. Can we hear, let me hear it again. He is exalted. He is exalted. Lift it up. Lift them up higher than your problems right now. Lift them up higher than whatever's on your mind right now. Lift them up higher than your hurts, your disappointments, your insecurities. He is exalted higher than above all, or higher and above all of that. And when we do, his power comes in. And we are setting ourselves up to be lifted to a higher level. Amen. He, he said that if he, if I if my name will be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Let's sing that again. Oh, he is exalted. He is exalted. He is exalted on high. All creation shall
up your name in this place, Lord. Hallelujah, God. I pray, God, as her name is lifted up in this place, that the enemy's kingdom be torn down. I pray, God, for freedom today. I pray for release today. I pray for breakthrough today, God, and I pray for breakout today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, team. Thank you. There is a young lady that is one of the most unsung heroes in this place. I'm looking at her right now. Do we appreciate Dee? There are very few things that happen in this church that she doesn't have some kind of uh, say in or some kind of part of in terms of organization, in terms of rallying the troops, getting the information out there, and all of it is behind the scenes. And we want to set aside today to appreciate her. Can we do that? Let's give her a big hand. Come on. Come on down. You're the next contestant. So in the springtime, it's traditional to honor administrative professionals. Uh, that's such a wide uh, category to say that she's our ex ex administrative professional is such, such an understatement. She, she's part of the backbone of this church. She has a passion to see people saved and to see this church grow and to see people set free. And she has a passion, passion to use her uh, abilities and her talents for the Lord. And uh, even in sending out the notice to you that we were going to be doing this, and I know several couldn't make it today, but you know what? They got notice, and even then, we felt a little hobbled because she's the one that has all, everybody's, she's the one that does the connecting, so we did our best. Maybe we didn't reach all of you. Maybe you didn't know we were going to do this. You'll have a chance to give in the future if you'd like to, but many of you gave, and we want to honor this woman of God today and tell her how much we appreciate her. Amen? <laughs> So well, that is from a church that loves you, sister. And let me tell you, as the guy that picked that up, be careful when you're driving. I drove like I was holding on to a passenger the whole time. <laughs> That's a beast. Anyway, we love you, sister. We love you. And we, have, we have some gifts for you. I'm going to pray for you, then I'd like for you to share with us. Could you share whatever's on your mind? Father, we thank you, Lord, for, for our sister. We thank you, God, for her for just who she is, God. That's all she can be. It's just who she is, who you made her to be, Father. And I just thank you for what her, her labor over the years, her passion, her tenacity, her, her willingness to just stick in there, God, the perseverance you've given her, Father. And I pray, God, that she would indeed uh, be blessed today, but more than that, that she would see the increase and in the harvest, the revival that you want to bring in this place. Bless her, Father, today as we bless her with this, with this gift in Jesus' name. And, Father, we also lift up Paul, who is away with family in Wyoming. Paul, we just thank you, brother. We thank you for all that you've done and continue to do. We thank you for your heart. Father, bless Paul right now where he is. Bless him, Father. Reveal yourself, Father, in Jesus' name, and bring him back safely. Amen. I don't even need to say it, but you guys all know I love each and every one of you. I have a special relationship with all of you. And I can't imagine doing life without any of you. You know, I, I thank God for this church. I was sharing with a young couple last night that about Jesus and about church. And I said, honey, you can come here any way you want. We got them from short shorts to long shorts. We got them from Levi's to suits. We got them tall, we got them small, we got them all here. Because you know what? We're a place that's just going to embrace each other right where we're at. You guys have embraced me with my, I call it my unpolished self. Because I'm not polished. I don't think I'll ever be polished. God finally said, give it up, sister. You know what? You're mine. You know what? He gave me, who I, he gave me my personality, and I thank God that I'm in a church that embraces that. It sees through my, are you going to do this? Are we going to do that? We got to go here. We got to go there. You see that my heart's really behind it and that I love each and every one of you so much. 
And to my husband that's watching, I miss you. Um, I, I, oh boy, do I miss you. Um, God has been gracious. I thank, I thank the ones that have stepped up to the plate to help me because I am not really a lot, I'm very mobile nowadays. I'm getting old. That's a lie. I just ain't exercising, okay? All right, so <laughs> let's just call it, let's cut that head off that bad boy right now. It's just, I'm not exercising, but Lord's going to do what he needs to do, right? And I thank God for the ones that have stepped up to the plate that have helped me throughout this time while my husband's away. Um, I know he'll be home soon. I'm praying that he comes home soon uh, as he is dealing with his mother and his family back there. So I thank all of you so much for your love and for your grace and your mercy. Amen. Thank you, sister. We'll just leave those there. We'll help you out with them later. They need, they need a dolly and uh, a three-man team to get that thing out of here. All right. Well, awesome. Um, so it's funny. I was in my own prayer today, uh, in preparation for today. I said to the Lord, I said, well, God, we'll see who is there today. See if I didn't scare them all off last week. <laughs> last week was uh, pretty raw, wasn't it? Did anybody get anything from it? Man, it was a powerful time. It was one of the largest, if not the largest, altar call times that I've experienced as this pastor. We were here for almost an hour after the church ended, and I was so proud of those that, um, that are going after it. And that's the thing, guys. I, I'm going after it. I want you to know. I'm just kind of telling you the direction that I'm going as your pastor and the direction that I feel like God is saying for us to go in. See, that's all I can do, guys. How many of you know there's no shortage of, of ministers out there to listen to? There's no shortage of movements out there that are going on. You can get on YouTube and just think, well, this is my church. But God speaks to individual churches. That's why he says, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together. And this is a word for us. I want to know what God is speaking to Crossover Church of God today, June of 2022. Amen. And I'm doing my best to do that. I believe that you maybe continue to be challenged today. And, um, and that's all right. I am challenged too, because I believe, I really believe, guys, we are on the cusp of something. Let's just dive right in. Repeat after me. I open my heart to receive from the word of God. God's promises are true and true for me. Amen. So I've been in this new series called A Season of Healing. I want you to know I feel strongly about this sermon series, I am living it myself. And everything that I preached to you, I want you to know that I'm going through it myself. So we, we talked about the idea that God's seasons are intentional. So if we say a season of so-and-so, that means God brought this season. And by the way, did you know that everything he does is seasonal? We're always in a season. Uh, but God has an intent and a reason for these seasons, and he carries it out, and he finishes what he started. So last week's message, if I were to uh, summarize it, it would be about honesty and getting real before the Lord. We said a couple of things. Repeat them with me nice and loud, please. It's okay to admit I'm not okay. We also said it's okay to ask God for complete healing. Amen? And it's okay to keep asking until the healing happens. I hope that you got something from that and are continuing to chase after that. Because up, here's the thing, guys. I believe that God is indeed about to do a new thing, and he's about to open some new doors. And as we said last week, our old ways will not open new doors. we got to get rid of this stuff. It's not going to open any doors. We're trying to put perfume on a pig. So we have a quandary here on our hands. On one hand, God wants to do a new thing. And we say we want the new thing. We say we want it desperately. But the truth is, if we're honest, when it comes to change, we want change. Right? We say we want change, but in our hearts, check this next statement out. We often want things to stay the same and just get better. Isn't that true? I'm just going to be real with you here today. We often want things to stay the same, just get better. God's healing doesn't work that way, guys. Here's an old recovery saying, it's very true in this circumstance, if nothing changes, Guess what? Nothing changes. If nothing changes, nothing changes. If, it was, if I was teaching a math class right now, I would show my class, hey, the way that math works, uh, at least the math that I used to use uh, <laughs> and learned, is that you know, there are some absolutes in math. 
And if, and if something, if A plus B equals C, that equal sign serves as a divider between two parts. And if A plus B equals C, then and if I want something different on the right side of the equation, which is the product, then I have to do something different on the left side. I can't just say, hey, I know A plus B equals C, but I, now I want A plus B plus W to be equal C. Well, it doesn't work that way. You want to add a W to the left side of the equation, you got to add a W to the right side. That's how math is, and that's how it works in God's kingdom. If nothing changes, if we're bringing the same stuff, we're bringing the same attitudes, we're bringing the same insecurities, we're bringing the same weakness to the altar, laying it down, and then picking it right back up, don't complain to God that nothing is changing in your life. I told you I'm going to be talking plain in this series. God wants to do a new thing. He says in Isaiah 43, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Guys, we cannot go into God's new while holding on to our old. We cannot go into God's new while holding on to our old. So we need to forget the old, don't we? He says, forget the former things. In other words, he's saying, don't dwell there. Don't dwell in the past. What does that mean? You, ever, I mean, you may have even used that phrase. Man, he needs to stop dwelling in the past. You know, or she, I'm dwelling in the past. What, is, what does dwell mean? Think about what dwell means. What does dwell mean? It's, it's where you live, right? Your dwelling place, your house or your apartment is your dwelling place. Don't live there. Don't camp out there. Don't even hang out there on occasionally. No longer let your mind go there, in other words. Now I want to say, I want to up the ante on this because I told you I'm going to talk bluntly in this whole series. It's not your friend. It's not your friend. It's not a cute and fuzzy. Well, you know, I just have this thing, you know, this part of me that's just, you know, this whatever it is. I just have this anger problem. I just have this, pro you know, this or that, whatever. I just like the ladies. I just like to check out the guys. I just like to, you know, whatever it is. It's not your friend. God says, forget the former things. Don't live there anymore. Don't even let your mind go there. It's not faithful. Get this now. It's not even right. Now try that on for size. So many times where we've let our minds go, when we're holding on to brokenness from the past, we've, we've assumed that these things are right. These things that we hold on to. People with anger problems, you're assuming that you're seeing things correctly. What if you're not? And by the way, you're never going to move on until you admit that you're not. What if we had this whole attitude that, hey, God, rewire me from the ground up. Do I have a right to even be offended in this? What am, how am I seeing things? God, I'm convinced that I've been seeing things wrong my whole life. I'm going to say another statement. It's not in your notes, but God gave this to me this morning when I was praying and studying for this. It is time for someone to stop trusting your insecurity. Come on now. It is time for somebody here, maybe it's me, to stop trusting your insecurity. Or in other words, how about we start distrusting your insecurity? Amen? Start distrusting your insecurity. When you're feeling insecure, rather than giving into it like we've done nine million times in the past, we start giving it life. We start, see, here's the thing about insecurity, guys. Insecurity, unchecked, takes life and it gets a voice. That's good. I should have put that in your notes. Insecurity, unchecked, begins to take life, and it gets a voice, doesn't it? But what if we had an attitude that maybe could start today? Why not start today? What, what's, what's the date today? Uh, June 5th. Why not? June 5th, 2022. Let it be stricken in the record that from now on, I'm not going to trust my insecurity. When that feeling comes along, I'm going to say, no, 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 oh, wait, wait. Every time in the past that's come up, I have believed it and I've acted on it. Every time. You know, they don't love you. They're disrespecting you. You're just this, this or that. This is going to overwhelm you. You can't stand up to this. Blah, 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 blah. Whatever it is. 
What if today we draw a line in the sand and say, no, 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 Satan, you get behind me. I am not listening to that anymore because I today made a vow that I'm going to start distrusting my insecurity. Ooh, wow, what a concept. See, I announced last week, I started talking about victim mentality. Did anybody pick up on that? I want to tell you something. Everything I said last week in my message about victim mentality was not in my notes. That was all the Holy Spirit speaking. So take that for what it is. But today I want to tell you this. We will never go forward with victim mentality. Never. Like I said last week, you might as well just hit pause on the button that is your life and your destiny where God wants to take you, your healing, your journey, all these things that you want to get over on. God, one day, why can't I just get over on this, Lord? Someday, oh, you know, that old Disney thing. Someday my prince will come. You know, someday my healing will come. It's out there somewhere. God, I want it desperately. Meanwhile, I, got, I can't believe what that person said, Lord. Every time they say that, it just makes me, oh, we need to stop it in the name of Jesus. We're hitting pause on our healing. You can't go forward with victim mentality. It's just like trying to drive down the freeway while looking in the rearview mirror not only unsafe, but very ineffective. God, I told you, or guys, I've, I've been telling you, I'm going to get blunt during this sermon series. Why? Because I'm trying to impress somebody? No. In fact, this morning, I told the Lord, I said, well, I expect the church to either be packed full or empty. <laughs> One or the other. Because, man, you know what? I mean, I'm not picking on anybody, but, you know, this stuff, you know, either, either you're ready to go after this or you're not. And, I, you know, God give me 30, 40 people that are really ready to go after this stuff and call it what it is and cut its head off and move forward. I'd rather have that any day than have 150. I have to go to three, three different services in this building because we're so full because I'm preaching something fluffy that doesn't change your life at all. I'm not in it for my ego. I'm not even in it for pay. I have, a, I have another job. I got things I could be doing. I'm going after it. I want to know, are you going after it? I want to leave an impact on this world. I have things to do. Here's the thing, guys. Time is short. Time is short. Jesus is returning quickly. He needs his church in place for what he's about to do. He wants to heal us. He wants to free us. Why? Because he loves us, first of all. He says, I am the God that heals you. I went over that last week. If you missed last week's sermon, man, you need to watch that. First of all, he wants to heal us because that, that is how he is. But more than that, it's because we have work to do. There is a lost world out there that desperately needs the hope of Jesus Christ more than ever. There is so much confusion right now in our culture. The youth people, I, I just, I weep for the, for the next generation coming up. They're just so confused. There's so many, just, so many dysphorias out there. What is solid anymore? Nothing is solid. It's all shifting. What in the world are they going to stand on when the name of the Jesus Christ has never stopped being the answer? And here's the thing, it work, the way it works in God's kingdom. God's not intimidated by what culture is doing. God's not intimidated by what our educational system is pumping down our kids. God's not intimidated by what Hollywood says or anybody or government's doing or all this stuff. God's not intimidated by any, by any of that because his truth is truth. Let God be true and every man a liar, the Bible says. And right in the middle of all this chaos, right in the middle of all this stuff, when it looks like the enemy's winning, he's about to bring revival. He's about to bring a great awakening. Uh, see, check this out. God is about to bring a great awakening and revival, and he needs us in position for it. I believe that with everything in me. That's why I'm up here doing this. It'd be so much easier for me to preach some kind of fluffy message it makes you feel good, and you leave and say, Pastor, that was great. But I want to know, are you being challenged by this? Are you leaving here with that aching feeling, and you're like, oh, man, I got some business to do with the Lord, man. I didn't realize how much stuff I'm still carrying around. I thought I had arrived. I got a long way to go. Good. You're right in position where God wants you. And see, here's the thing. Our brokenness gets us out of position. By the way, I should throw in and keeps us there, too. <laughs> right? It gets us out of position, doesn't it? You're in no position for what God wants to bring in your life when you're still licking your wounds, when you're still cursed, nursing and rehearsing, 
well, those people this, if they hadn't done that, if I, blah, 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 blah. every time I try, blah, 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 blah. all that stuff, it's just, we're, we're, we're just getting on that vicious cycle again and not going anywhere. And I said last week, it opens up things. And, 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 and we get like that victim mentality, we start isolating, don't we? Isn't that one of the first things we want to do? Well, I don't need to go. Well, that's all right. I, I'm good. You know, I'll, maybe I'll watch. I don't know. I can figure this out. I just need to take a break. Maybe I just need to go for a drive. That's all right. Go for a drive as long as you're getting, taking care of some business. I love riding my motorcycle with my buddies. Talk to one today about a pending ride we need to do really soon, don't we? But you know what? I also like riding by myself, too, because I can get out there where it's just me and the wind and the pipes. I can scream out. I can call out to the Lord. I get some stuff done with the Lord when I'm out there by myself. That's just one of my happy places because I don't want my brokenness to get me out of position, see? So I start sniffing these things out. Guys, what I'm, what I'm preaching to you today, this may explain why many of us as believers, we can be born again, even spirit-filled, yet never really go forward in our destiny. Because we are literally out of position. It's like, man, we're out of adjustment. Anybody ever know what, you know what I'm talking about when your back gets out of adjustment or something? You need to get cracked, you know, you go to the doctor and, you know. Isn't that same feeling? We're walking around spiritually like that. We're out of adjustment. We're walking like this. You know, barely walking at all. We're out of position because we're still normalizing things. Here's another point I want to make. Too many weak things are normalized in the church. Come on. I told you I'm talking blunt. Too many things are normalized. Weak things are normalized in the church. You know what I'm saying by that? It's a mentality that says, well, this is just the way I am. Every time you do that, you're giving it a voice. Whenever you allow yourself to think that way and worse, repeat it, you speak it out loud, you are literally giving your shame and brokenness a voice. Come on, isn't that true? Is that true? Stop it. What do you do? Just stop it. That's not just the way you are. God didn't. God did not create alcoholics. God did not create anxiety-filled, neurotic people. God did not create depression. God did not create. He did not give us a spirit of fear. What did he instead give us? Power, love, and a sound mind. And by that same spirit that he deposited in us, he tells us, you are not a slave to fear anymore. Instead, that same spirit prompts us to call out, Abba, Father, Daddy. That's how it's supposed to be. He's supposed to be our default when things go awry, but instead, we give in to this brokenness that we've given a voice to all of our lives. Oh, maybe we kind of play around with it. I mean, we've been in church for a while. We know that sooner or later, maybe it's a couple of weeks, maybe it's a couple of months, maybe it's a couple of years, whatever, we'll come back to the Lord. I don't know. I just got to figure some things out. How about we do it right the second it happens? You get what I'm saying? These things are weak and they've been normalized for too long. It is not the way you are. God did not make you that way. And with that, I'll say, that we need to stop excusing our brokenness. Well, you know, I just got to have a drink now and then. Well, it's just how I am. I got this anger problem. Well, you know, I don't know, man. The people, they just push me, man. I did those people today. You know, blah, 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 blah. That's just, no. In Jesus' name, I come against that and say, in Jesus' name, we need to stop excusing our brokenness. Because every time we do that, we're giving it a voice. Okay, here we go. Ready? It's time to cut its head off. Without a head, it has no voice. Okay? That's a theme of my life right now. I told my wife, just, just maybe it was yesterday, even, even in preparation for this and, and thinking about my next week, I got a meeting coming up. I'm really dreading, and I'm finding those familiar feelings of dread coming up, like this thing's going to overwhelm me somehow, and I'm not going to be able to stand, even though every time in the past I put in a position like that where I'm grilled in that kind of a setting, I come out okay. Yet every time I have this default place that I go to, and I'm at the place now where it's like, shut up. I'm going to cut the head off of that thing. I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Jesus' name, we got to cut the head off that dude because without a head, it has no voice. 
See, we said this last week. It's worth saying again. God only, not only wants to remove the sin and brokenness in our lives, but he wants to remove the indelible stain they left. Many of us deal with the sin. Okay, well, I just don't drink anymore. Yeah, well, you know, that explains why you're a dry drunk. The, even the secular world gets that. They have terms like dry drunk. What is a dry drunk? That's someone that hasn't drunk in a while, but they haven't changed any of their behavior that made them drink to begin with. They're a walking time bomb, and it's just a matter of time before things happen, and then gets explode. And that's one of the things that happens when we are giving into all this stuff. Sooner or later, we're going to go right back to our addictions. This could be a, me a message on relapse today, just as well as it's a message that I'm preaching today. Because we haven't gone after what's down below. He not only wants to remove the sin and brokenness in our lives, but he wants to remove the indelible stain they left. Okay, what's indelible mean? Remember last week? Not able to be forgotten or removed. Somebody needs to get this today. Let's reword what I just said now with that in mind. God wants to remove those things that we can't forget, those things that we thought couldn't be removed. I couldn't put any plainer than that. God wants to remove those things that we can't forget, those things that we thought couldn't be removed. Well, I guess that's just the cross I got to bear. Well, you know, this happened to me when I was a kid, and I don't know. I guess that's just something. No, no, no. Heal from it, cut its head off, and move on. In Jesus' name, of course. Right? Do you get what I'm saying? That's intentional, and that's real. I told you, I'm just getting real today. We got to stop coddling this stuff. We got to stop excusing it. It's time to cut this, the head off of this stuff and, and so it doesn't have a voice anymore. So repeat with me now, nice and loud. God, remove the indelible stain of my sin and brokenness. Check this one out. Remove it to the point where it's forgotten. No longer playing a role in my life. No longer impacting how I view setbacks and disappointments. I can get to the place where I can say it is what it is. See, I have a shirt that says that. It is what it is. When I first got into recovery 24 years ago, that annoying really, I mean, that saying really annoyed me. I just thought it was a bunch of people that just kind of gave up on life. Well, it is what it is. I can't train anything, you know. No, I understand it now because it is what it is means that things happen, you know, disappointments happen. Oh, well, move on with life. It doesn't have to impact who I am anymore. I want to tell you, I'm not a dry drunk. I haven't drunk, I haven't had a taste of liquor in over 24 years. But more than that, I'm, I started years ago going after the reasons that I did drink. And you may not struggle with alcohol or drug problems in this house, but you got many people carrying around anxiety. Many people carry around these mindsets, the garbage, the insecurities that come up and accusing you, that accusing voice that carries, that you thought was just part of you. In Jesus' name, I say that's a lie from the pit of hell. And we got to go after that. Now, that's real recovery. I say on Monday nights often, if I lose my keys and I find them, I recovered them. What are we recovering in recovery? Our true selves, the way we were meant to be. I wasn't created to be an alcoholic or a drug addict. I wasn't created to be all the things that I did in my party lifestyle. I wasn't created for that. That's something I did. That's not who I am. You get what I'm saying? See, unless you, until you allow God, that truth to resonate in you, you will believe the lie that you are this drug addict that's just barely trying to make, make it through. You're going to believe that you are this anxiety-filled person that's just trying to get a few tools so you can just get through life. No, no, no. You are more than a conqueror. We can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You are God's elect. You are his child who may have a struggle in a certain area, but you know what? That's the old you, and you are living this on this journey now to learning how to crucify the flesh. Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live. The old life that I lived, that's gone. Well, wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense, Pastor, because I still struggle. I, 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 every once in a while, I have triggers, man. I see something on the movie in a movie, or I see the woman, or I see a man, you know, and it's, you know, it's all this, this stuff, these, this just rises up. I guess that's just how I am. No, see, that's, that's your flesh. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone be in Christ, they are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come, right? 
Well, if, well then why, Pastor? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm scanning the, I thought we had that on a banner. Yeah, right there it is. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. If anyone is a Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Then why do I still struggle, Pastor? Because that's your flesh. Our spirit man was regenerated the moment we believe. Your flesh, which is a body that wants to do what it wants to do when it wants to do what it wants to do. It's stupid carbon substrate. It'll do whatever you tell it to do. You believe the lie that you were subject to what your body wanted. That's a lie. We're supposed to offer our bodies as living sacrifices, aren't we? Doesn't the Bible say that? I can't offer something as a living sacrifice if it has control over me. In my mind, are you kidding? The Bible says that we're renewed by the transforming of our minds. We're not renewed by the transforming of our spirit. That happened the moment we believe. So our Christian walk becomes this journey of realizing I am who was regenerated in Christ the moment I believed. I am left here on this earth to get control of my mind and get control of this body. And you can do it. If you couldn't, you wouldn't be told to do that. Because I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, again, when we allow ourselves to think the way that we've always thought in the past, when the accusing voice comes and wants to drag us right back down under the surface, we're giving it a voice. It's like we're just breathing life back into it when we're supposed to actually take this thing out to the woodshed and cut its head off. In other words, when, we're, when, when these things have been removed by the Lord to the point where they are forgotten, they no longer are, are at play in our lives, no longer have sway in our lives. Guys, that's God's kind of healing. So I just want to ask you a couple of questions. Is anybody in here ready for a miraculous healing in your life? Are you ready to have God remove these stains of your past so that they no longer affect your present or your future? So here is your nugget for today. I left, I left you some nuggets last week. Here's your nugget for the day and kind of your assignment, as it were, for today. The healing begins when the truth in our heart speaks louder than the voice in our heads. And it won't happen a moment before that. And it's not a one-time thing. It's not, it's not like the, parts, the clouds are going to part and the, the angels are going to sing, oh, you know, ho. Oh. And all of a sudden, you're just arrived. You can live life in a frolic through the meadow. It's a process. But it doesn't even start. That engine doesn't even fire up until the truth in our heart speaks louder than the voice in our heads. And what is the truth? Well, I'm glad you asked. 1 John 3, this is how we know we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and, knows, and he knows everything. <laughs> Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God and receive from him anything we ask because we keep his commands and do what pleases him. Wow. Did you know that's in the Bible? Doesn't that speak directly to what I'm talking about here? So first of all, let's unpack that quickly in the time I have remaining. And let's just say this nice and loud together, please. We belong to the truth, not the lie. God's truth. I'm talking about the truth of who you are in Christ. And who is that? Well, John started that very same chapter of 1 John 3 with these awesome words. See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called the children of God. And that is what we are. Let's say those last words together. And that is what we are Let's personalize it, please, on the screen. That is what I am. That is who I am. That's truth, guys. That's God's truth. The truth. The truth. The truth that while we were still in our darkest, Christ died for us. He didn't wait for you to get your act together. The truth that says... He knew us at our darkest. He loved us at our darkest. He saved us at our darkest. He knows about our darkness that still lingers. And he knows it better than we even know it ourselves. Did you catch that? He knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows all about us, and he is not condemning us for any of it. Why are we still condemning ourselves? Good question, right? 
So here's another statement I want to lay on you. When we know the truth and reject the lie, we can shut down debilitating self-criticism even when there is something to it. That's good. When we know the truth, when the truth in our hearts is speaking louder than the voice in our head, you know that committee? We call it self-talk, whatever. It's all the same. It's that self-criticism. When we know the truth and reject the lie, we can shut it down. That self-debilitating self-criticism. Man, we are the worst. Did you know that sometimes the, the biggest bully in our lives is facing us right back in the mirror? We get so many things going in our mind about how other people feel about us and what they're doing and not doing and, and this and that. And they don't respect you. They don't really love you. And you're blah, 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 all this stuff. I mean, I hate to rain on your parade. They're probably not even thinking about you. I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Man, it, it wouldn't, what kind of world do we, what color is the sky in our world at times? When we let our minds go to these places, when the truth of the matter is, they're probably not even thinking about you at all. That's, I, I have counseled many people that hold on to bitterness and unforgiveness for years and years and years and years. They're just rehearsing that thing all over in their minds. And they think that holding on to that unforgiveness gives them some kind of control over that person that hurt them. It's exactly the opposite. And I tell them that at some point in time, I'll say, I hate to rain on your parade. They're probably not even thinking about you right now. They don't think that about you. They're not, they're not you know, they're probably moved on. They're, obviously, they're very insecure. They're very, they hurt people themselves if they did something like that to somebody. I guarantee they're moving on. They moved on. Why haven't you? So that's the thing about unforgiveness. It's drinking a poison and expecting it to hurt the other person. It's madness. It's manic at best. But when we can learn how to, when we know the truth, Jesus said, then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. He didn't say, then you'll hear the truth. We know it when we assimilate it, when we start practicing it, when we can say when it rises up. Guess what, guys? Every time the voice rises up in our minds and wants to drag us down and we say, get thee behind me, Satan, or worse yet, I say, I'm going to cut your head off in the name of Jesus. I'm not listening to that anymore. Guess what you're doing? You just got a deposit of truth. <laughs> you're growing in truth and grace. See, that's how it works getting a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger, a little bit stronger. When we, re when we do that and we reject, reject the lie, we can shut down self-debilitating self-criticism. Did you notice that last part? Even when there's something to it. See, that's how the enemy gets us. There's always something to it. I oftentimes use the crazy analogy that, you know, the enemy doesn't accuse me of being an eight-foot clown with big purple shoes. You know, I, I have big shoes, but I'm not eight feet or I'm not a clown. I guess I am sometimes a clown. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He, he's, it's not some kind of cockamamie thing he, he accuses us of. He accuses us of our past <laughs> because these things really did happen, right? So even when there is something to it, we can shut it down. Why? Because that's not who I am anymore. Yeah, I did that. You know what? I'm not doing that anymore. Jesus' name, today, why not? June 5th, today, 2022, I drew a line in the sand. That's not who I am anymore. I'm not giving life to that anymore. I'm not giving it a voice anymore. And that's truth, guys. That's why we need to cut the head off this thing. And when we do so, we'll take the voice. So I'll say it again, guys. The healing begins when the truth in our heart speaks louder than the voice in our heads. We can lay down the brokenness that keeps getting us stuck we can lay down the sin that so easily entangles, and we can do what pleases God. See, that's what that's all about. You're not going to please anybody. You're not going to want to please God until you can really understand what he's done for him, for you. To know God is to love him. To love him is one to obey him. It doesn't, it doesn't work. It doesn't work otherwise. So we can walk in freedom. We can walk into what he's called us to walk in. And then... We take that a step further. When the truth speaks louder than the lie, our hearts can be at rest in God's presence. Hallelujah for that. Rest. Doesn't that sound good? I like to rest. How about you? When was the last time your heart was at rest? Don't answer that. Out loud, at least. But think about it. When was the last time your heart was really at rest and you didn't have something badgering you? It's always that yeah, but. You know, even on the good days, right? 
You ever try to accelerate a good day? You know, something, something's happening. You know, you, you're with your family or something or whatever it is. You're with your spouse and you guys are just really clicking. There's just that part of you that's like, yeah, but. You know, right? Isn't it just always there? We can't accept good things. We, some of us have a hard time accepting gifts. First thing we think of is, I didn't deserve this. Next thing we think of is, this good thing that was given to me would probably be taken away because I, every other good thing that's happened in my life has been derailed somehow or another. See, that's shame talking. I'm t- I'm not, that's not truth. That's shame. That's your past. All that shame can throw at you and all the enemy can throw at you is your past. You now know what the deal is. When that rises up, don't give it a voice anymore. Instead, say, you know what? I'm done with you. I'm cutting your head off. Without a head, you don't have a voice anymore. Jesus' name. I don't care if you feel like it or not. Sometimes you just got to make it till you, fake it till you make it. You just, you just do what's right. Sometimes we just got to learn to do what's right and let the feelings follow, right? My dad said it for years. Your feelings are supposed to be the caboose, not the locomotive. Did you know, by the way, that the origin in the Latin of the word emotion is to mean, it means preceding motion. Did you know that? Your feelings often lead to motion, don't they? And that's the thing is you will always act in accordance with how you see yourself and how you feel about yourself. You can say all you want. You can come in here and praise God. Oh, Lord, oh, God is good. Oh, yeah. All oh, hail King Jesus. While you're saying to you by yourself, man, I'm a loser. I don't deserve any of this. I'm going to probably blow this. In fact, before the day's up, up I probably need to probably have, have a drink just so I can sleep tonight. See how it works? Emotion, emo, uh, a feeling preceding motion. When you're listening to your insecurity, it's a feeling preceding motion. You act on it. How much carnage has been in our lives because we've acted on our emotions? Man, it just, it's, you can grieve that. There's been so much that we need to grieve it. Those are years you'll never get by, get, never get back. How many relationships have been dissolved because you have let your feelings precede emotions or let precede motion, action? You've acted on how you feel. Time to cut the head off that, guy, that dude, guys. That's not freedom. That's not belonging to the truth and acting like you belong to the truth. It's a real simple litmus test, guys. We pray, Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. He said, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I can guarantee you, I've never been to heaven myself, but I can guarantee you 100% there's no insecurity in heaven. I can guarantee you 100% there's no victim mentality in heaven. They're not living in the past in heaven. They're not licking their wounds in heaven. They're not anxious in heaven. They're not depressed in heaven. (laughs) Right? So, indeed, I want to start acting like who I am, Lord. So this indeed is who we are. We can be at rest in his presence. Man, that sounds pretty good to me. When we do this, we are positioning ourselves, guys, for the healing and the breakthrough that God wants to bring. In other words, we're going to be at the right place at the right time when he brings revival. Amen? So now you know how to position. Now you know what's gotten you out of position. Now you know how to get yourself back into position. So here's your assignment for this week. I left you some last week. I hope that you guys worked on that stuff. I'm trying to be really practical. Let's say this nice and loud, please. Lord, let what is in my heart be stronger than what is in my head. What if you have to say that 20 times a day? What if you have to say that 100 times a day? Every single time that insecurity, that little badgering, anxious thought comes, that worry starts to set in, that feeling about whatever makes you insecure. By the way, can I just throw this in almost parenthetically? No extra charge for this. Let me tell you about something practical about your insecurity. You go after it. Look at what makes you, here's how you go after it. Look at what makes you feel feel really secure, and you're going to have a clue about your insecurity. I'm not talking about having money in the bank or, you know, the things that your mind immediately goes to. That's, That's work that you need to do with the Lord. God, what makes me feel okay? I feel okay when my 
spouse and I are getting along, when I have money, you know, whatever it is. And then you're going to start getting clues about your insecurity. See, because insecurity is where fear collides with shame. Fear is a natural reaction. In fact, fear can keep you alive. I often say that. You should fear wrestling a bear. You should fear jumping off a cliff. I keep you alive. Fear in itself is not the problem. It's always what we do with it, right? See, we fear. We fear negative outcomes. That's what worry is. It's negative fantasizing. It's projecting yourself into a fictitious future that hasn't even happened yet. Fear, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. And then you live there. <laughs> and then it becomes more real than what's actually literally happening around you. That's where dread rolls in. Because there's now an expectation of this. Okay, and that's where shame joins the party and says, yeah, you know that negative outcome is going to happen because that's what always happens to you. You know that whenever you try to do this, it always comes back on you. You're going to fail. Don't even try. All that stuff. Shame just joins the party. And guess what now? Insecurity. Get what I'm saying? What, what's the cure for that? The truth. <laughs> the truth. It blows it up. This is how we know we belong to the truth and we set our hearts at rest in his presence. If our hearts condemn us, it might as well say since our hearts will condemn us because they will. We know that he is stronger than our hearts and he knows everything about us, right? That's how we do it. Lord, let my, what is in my heart today be stronger than what's in my head. And every time we take those thoughts out to the woodshed and cut their head off, every time we do that, instead of giving in and mulling it over and all that stuff, you're getting a little bit stronger. And that voice gets a little bit uh, quieter, a little bit quieter, a little bit quieter. And then pretty soon we can just look at it for what it is and just step on it in the name of Jesus. Get thee behind me, Satan. We are called to trample on the scorpions, to trample on the snakes. We're supposed to trample on this stuff, not let it trample us. In the name of Jesus. So this season of healing is a little bit different than what you might have thought. Maybe I just, I just thought, Pastor, when you announced you're going to preach a season of healing, I could just come in and just come in however I am and get my hands, get hands laid on me and whoo, everything would be all right. You know what that's called? That's called zap theology. I just need to be zapped. Don't require anything at all of me. I don't want to have to change anything in my mind. I don't have to do any work, heavy lifting, heaven forbid. That's zap theology. Go down here, get a powerful altar call experience. Walk out of here, get right back into your junk. That's a problem with living sacrifices. We have a tendency to crawl off the altar, don't we? Take some heavy lifting, guys. If we want it, we got to go after it. It's going to take some work on your part this week. Every time, I'm telling you, every time that voice starts rising up. You know what that voice is for you? I know what it is for me. I've already had to take that hatchet out. By the way, Lowe's has some really nice, sharp hatchets and, 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 and axes. Go over there, get yourself a nice one hanging on your wall just to remind you of what you need to do in the spiritual realm. Seriously, I'm, not, I'm, I'm kind of joking, but I'm not joking. Whatever it takes. Because we've given into this stuff, and that's why we're in this mess. We've given it a voice. Every time you rehearse it, every time you speak it, every time you let your mind go there, you're giving it a voice. How many, I want to ask you, how many days, how many months, how many years, how many decades has your life been robbed because of this? I, I drank, I lost my first marriage, I lost everything, I was living out of my truck, I lost everything because of it weak. Let's call it what it is. It's weak. Your little thing in your head, it's weak. In Jesus' name, shut up. Shut up. Well, your wife doesn't really love you. Shut up in the name of Jesus. Well, you're this, whatever that. You're a loser. You're going to fail. Ah, you know what? Shut up. Right? And you watch as you start growing. Then what happens is that God joins you because now you're acting in belief and obedience. Now you're in position and the spirit of the Lord is going to come in like a flood and he's going to do what only he can do. See, I had to surrender. I was in my truck 
going to rehab, thinking about suicide. I told you my story. You know my story. I literally was thinking about suicide. It's the only thing that made any sense. But instead, I called out right there on my truck, God, if you're real, I need you now more than ever. I had to surrender. I had to lay it down. And he came in. And I'll tell you, I always had church right there in, the, in that truck. I felt something lift off of me, and I was never the same after that. Take surrender. So as I close, and then like I said before, what we're going to do, I'm going to explain to you how I want to end this service here in a minute. I want to repeat, let's repeat out loud what I laid on you last week. I called it the healing manifesto. Remember that? What's a manifesto? That's basically like a public declaration of your intent. I'm making a public declaration of my intent. This is what I'm committing to. Ready? Repeat after me. Lord, I commit to the following. I will be real with you. That means admitting I'm not okay at times. Boy, what a concept. I, I will resist the urge to self-manage. I will cooperate with your work through obedience. See? That's our part. I will stop speaking negativity. Somebody needs to hear that. I need to hear that. And lastly, I will submit to your process of removing the indelible stain of my sin and brokenness. Now, these are all in your notes. They were in your notes last week. You can do something with this during the week. I warned everybody last week after that great altar call we had. I warned them all. warned everybody. Mark your calendar. By the time you get to your truck or your car, you're probably going to be challenged in this. Many times there's roadkill because we're just not ready for that, you know? The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but you stand in the truth of what was committed. Amen? And do the homework. See, something needs to be laid down today, guys. That's where I feel. That's where I feel like the Spirit has me. Something needs to be laid down and I want to leave you with this thought. If you want the new that God has for you, I encourage you to come up and lay down the old and let the healing begin. Amen? So this is the way I'd like to do the end of the service today and the, alt and the altar call slash communion elements, all of that, is that I'd like to have some time for you to come up, do some business with the Lord. I encourage you, lay down something. We all have something that needs to be laid down. Lay it down, and then grab your elements when you're done. Go back to your seat, and we'll have communion together. Folks at home, I encourage you to do the same thing. I know there's several uh, watching remotely today. Do business with the Lord. Lay down whatever it is that needs to be laid down. Grab your elements. Go back to your seat, and we'll have communion in a minute. I encourage everybody to participate. Is that a, is that a plan? All right. Bless you.
Don't let your hearts be troubled. Jesus said the very night he was betrayed. I'm going to prepare your homes and I'll come back to get you all someday. You know where I am going. Tom said, No, Lord, we don't know the way. Jesus reassured them with these words that will never pass away. I am the way, I am the truth. I am the light, believe in me. I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. Come to me, and I will. Else. A little bit different of an altar call and communion today. So here, complicated contraptions. Pull off the plastic on the top, it reveals the bread. This bread represents the blood of Christ that purchased, I mean, excuse me, the body of Christ that was broken and sacrificed, that purchased this freedom that I just preached to you today. Hold your bread up. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this bread that represents that body that was freely given, freely broken on our behalf. Father, as we eat this bread, I pray that we be strengthened knowing that we are not on this journey on our own, that this sacrifice was made for us to empower us, to give us strength to walk this thing out. I pray for each person that has laid something down here today, Lord. Invigorate us, Father. Speak to us, Lord. Let this be a strengthen not only to our body, but a strengthening to our hearts, to our souls, to our spirit. In Jesus' name, let's eat. Thank you, Lord. The next layer reveals the juice. This juice represents the blood of Christ that was shed for us on the cross. As we say, there's, the Bible says that the life of a creature is in the blood. As we're drinking this juice, I pray that it would infuse you with life, but also that we would not forget that it was through the shedding of that blood on the cross that we have forgiveness of not only the sins, but also the indelible stain that shame and the past and our brokenness has left in our lives. Let's drink the juice. We thank you for your blood that was shed for us, that paved the way for all of this that we have discussed today. I pray, God, that we would be invigorated and and strengthened, Father, spiritually, physically, emotionally, mentally, Lord. I stand against any lie that is even now coming in and trying to wrap its tentacles around us, Lord. And I I know, Lord, it's not going to be easy, that we're going to have to walk out of here and continue to walk in this battle. But I pray that right now you would strengthen each person to indeed do that, that we would not look back. I believe you're calling us to stop looking back and no, look back, no Lord, no more, Lord. Right. Only going forward in you, Father, because we cannot go into the new of what you have for us while we're still living in the old. I pray that blessing for each person, not only here today, but watching from home. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah. Bless you.